Uh, ever since MSI, I wouldn't be surprised to see it in maybe a Casio band towards Fox. No idea, honestly. I'm I'm just gonna wait. I did enough predictions today. I'm just gonna watch and see how this goes. Now let's see. Picks and bans these days are very reactive, right? So SK takes out the Hecarim staple from Huni. That's nice. Uh, Fnatic opens up with an Urgot ban. This this puts more value. So once one counterpart gets banned out, there's more value in the in the opposite, right? So when Urgot comes out, Kalista becomes a little higher value, but there's still Sivir that hasn't really been played well uh, yet in the European CS. Really quick pick and ban phase. Daylor is putting uh, putting the heat on SK. Really uh, calculated bans here. Focusing onto Fox as well. LeBlanc off the table, Kastlin off the table. It means Azir's up, Cassio's up. Jungler's left untouched. Gragas is available if Rainover wants to get his hands on the Fat Man, and he's done such great work. Until this last ban coming out, it will be the Gragas. So, Sejuani and Rek'Sai. We've seen Rainover also doing phenomenal work with Rek'Sai. We've seen a number of Rek'Sai bans. What if Fnatic prioritizes? Is this case scared of the Kalista first picks and tells Fnatic, hey, uh, we're banning uh, Gragas because we want you to pick Rek'Sai first. We really wouldn't want you to get that Kalista. Or are they saying, well, take Kalista and then at least we'll get one of the two strong junglers in uh, Rek'Sai and Gragas. Rek'Sai could be a good pick for Rainover. I like it. Uh, but maybe Svenskern has an answer ready. I do like Rek'Sai into, into Kalista then if the, the mirror swap happens because you can just flash knock up and just CC him down or her down on it. Well, imagine if this is how many options Kripo's pointing out with these five guys on stage are talking about with Daedalor in the background trying to guide them all. You know, they've got a multitude of options and somewhat as expected that Rek'Sai is locked in. I think it's a solid choice because we don't even know if uh, Candy Panda really wanted that Kalista, right? Um, looks like a bait. You know, banning Gragas saying, hey, take, take Rek'Sai, we have a plan. I'm not sure what Svensk is going to play. Is he going to pick up Lee Sin again? Likely. Sejuani doesn't look too likely. Azir is still open, but Fevevan has shown that a very potent mid laner. And here's the Kalista. Yeah, you definitely don't want to give up Rek'Sai and Kalista at the same time. So, SK Gaming still to lock in the champions. 30 seconds left. I don't all, like the hovering. All of the priorities. I'm going to take another step back. Considering Rumble and Hecarim is off the table for Huni, where do the top laners decide to go? Maokai is up, Nara is okay, up. Nar, Huni had such a great night performance yesterday. It's, it's hard to think of something else being in his hands. Yeah, Huni can play both sides of the matchup fine. He he's not worried. He we're just kills he'll, he'll pick up some some weird solo queue pick that he's practiced off the off the books because this guy uh champion pool is probably limitless and yes really nice picks I like Kalista I like Azir but they just gave Fnatic a possible extra 35 seconds to prepare for this round of picks Combo. and and why would you do that? Why would you hover that? You you can literally not pick anything and then pick it at the last second. It's minute it doesn't really matter too much but in the pick and ban game, now that it's evolving and you have those coaches involved, I really want teams to pay a little more attention to that. I'm a big fan of that because it was something that the casters at MSI were debating off air. The merits of the psych out and whether or not you should hover something to bait a discussion potentially and then swap at the last second to what you intend. It, there is a lot of psychological mind games that we literally can't convey because we're not in the player's heads or listening to their comms through their entirety. Ends up being the Alistair for Yellowstar, the Nart for Huni. Fnatic playing almost standard, leaving the carries for last. I like the Alistair pickup has been proven to work really well for everybody except maybe Unrated so far in, in, uh, in the first few games of this European LCS summer split. Really good champion, solid. Gets through any laning phase with sustain. If you can mani manipulate the wave to push towards you, usually is possible. Good roaming potential, good dive potential, and yeah, another tank. So Fnatic innately very tanky in their first three picks. So they'll need to get some damage out of the last two. Wow, well, we know that both Reckless and Febivin can put a ton of damage down, depending on the route they want to go. SK, they've got to decide two more picks. And made it not the biggest Thresh player. Oh, has played some Nami in the past, gonna be too squishy. If we look at the Nidalee here, we get a, a nice poke and siege. Sentry composition, but no tank. Does that mean Enrage is gonna pick up Nautilus? Leaving support. For the last pick. Well, dramatic Dawn. in the background. That's it. Maokai locked in for Freddy. So it is the Nar Maokai matchup. Yeah. Just Top as lane we thought. carries main sort of primary carries taken off, so therefore fall back to disruption and heal champions. Sven Skeren not really getting his hands on those traditionals, but it is basically more of the same. Reckless, second Ash game of the summer split. The Azir Cassiopeia has been something that Crepo, you have been talking about so much on this patch. No Sivir, just as a note, just as an aside, I think we've seen it once. 
The, We've got the Fnatic comp round them out. The problem is, I think Sivir, if you're just looking at Fnatic's side, would have been so incredibly good here. But Fnatic wants to take the 2v2, I think. They want to snowball Huni into Svensk, uh, into uh, Freddy, rather. And they're, they're fine taking the 2v2 because Ash can stay at bay. Worst case, once the trade is going poorly, you can at least stop the Kalista, knock her out. She has to hop back in. It's hard to miss that Pulverize if you're right on top of her. And knowing Enraid's champion pool, there might not be a good answer. Hey! He's going for the bard. Enraid, make me proud. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a magical journey. Let's see how this plays out. The bard master himself. Round out the SK composition for me. No, let's not run that out. Let's just focus on the Bard right now. <laughs> really, really potent 2v2. I think this actually might prompt a swap from Fnatic. Bard is incredibly good against these non-mobile champions like Alistar, like Ash. They walk up, you queue them. If they're near to a wall, they get stunned. If somebody tries to tank the skill shot, you know, where Miffy takes the hook, not possible with Bard. They'll just chain through, stun you. You you try to hide in minions. No, no, it's not going to happen. Q goes right through and stuns you anyways. But is that going to happen? Let's see how well Enraided has practiced this Bard. Um, Bart excels in auto attack trading. Kalista excels when some of the auto attack trades with you. It's all perfect synergy. Very potent lane. However, one tank on SK side. That worries me. We'll find out whether or not Freddy's Maokai will be strong enough this particular game. Bart is locked in for the first time in the summer split. The coaches taking to the middle of the stage. Daylor and Material Boy. Both shaking hands for the first time of Fnatic versus SK, what was the headline clash of 2014 many, many times. I'm excited to see how this matchup plays out. I know we've discussed Bard Love so much this week. And Mr. Smug Crepo on the side is somewhat of the biggest Bard fanboy. You guys at home, tell us. Hashtag FMC win or hashtag SK Bard win. Let us know. Let's not tunnel too much on the Bard. Let's just give him a brief introduction. It is a new champion, hasn't been played in the LCA yet. What does Bard excel at? Let's get the crowd, give their moment. Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? That's us loading onto the Rift. Fnatic on the blue side, SK on the red side. Observers, I'm sure you'll be keeping your eyes on Bard, and they are. Take us on a magical journey and rate it. So let's see how good and rated it is. Is he going to pick up the champs early, like the novice Bard would, or is he going to leave them up, stack them up, get five of them, and run roam into the mid lane? for a nice little play there. Um, later in the game though, the engages with Bar ulti will be crucial because Febivan does not have Flash. Uh, does not have uh, any mobility except for Flash. Ash does not have any mobility except for Flash. If you can land the Bard ultimate on top of them, keep them in place, give them an, yeah, involuntarily Zonias, and then group your team on top of them and immediately blow them up, this can be absolutely devastating for SK. However, you have to land them. Well, we'll see how close those skill shots can land. Whether or not Enrated can temper SK's Look at that mango. fate. The Bard bus is coming. The Bard <laughs> Choo choo. <laughs> right, SK. Febivin they have found Febivin. Febivin's in trouble. The Cosmic Binding is going to get the slow, the flash forward. And that's going to be first blood to the Flash Ignite. And it was just the Meep Empowered Auto Attack first, then the Cosmic Binding, which actually missed him. And rated. Zoning Cosmic Binding. Zoning Cosmic Binding. Master of the Zoning into the Ignite? Zoning into the Ignite. Well, all jokes aside, for the first time seeing Bard, it's difficult to imagine a more interesting start to the game. Definitely uh, shakes things up there, Trev. <laughs> All right, they're predicting a lane swap, initiating a lane swap, not quite sure what they're doing. That's why Enraided picked up Chimes on the bottom side. Chimes usually spawn around where you are uh, at the map, you know? There's an AI to it. Uh, double Golem's taking ta uh, being taken here by Fnatic. They know SK is lane swapping, and they're opting to take control of the right side of the map, avoiding this lane somehow. Not quite sure what the mind games here are, who's mind gaming who, but let's just see how this evolves. Well, we'll have to take a close eye. Yesterday, Fnatic did the 4v0 against Unicorns of Love. You don't see Sven making a strong move at the moment, but in rated. Picking up see? little meeps around the map. I'm not a fan of picking it up. I'd rather leave them up and then chain them one by one by one so you can move and roam a lot quicker. There's no value. You don't need that mana right now. I know it's nitpicking, but Bard excels at these rapid movement plays uh, where you can arrive at positions and locations quicker than your opponents expect them to. It's not, it upgrades at five stacks, but that's enough about Bar. Let's see how Fnatic reacts. They're down 500 gold, but they got ideal lanes. Ash wants to scale, they wants to get the arrow. You know, Alistar wants to get the level six to get that innate tankiness. They've divided the, the map in half. There is no 
aggressive counter jungling from Svenskrin because both teams have uh, got a part of the jungle. Let's see how this plays out. So we do see Rainover moving back into his jungle, starting off the Bramble back, got the assist of Huni. Top laners holding the hands of their junglers. You can see Sven and Freddy chilling in the tri-bush top lane. They're going to make their way onto Fnatic's tower. Fnatic going to be late and undermanned if they eventually get to their tower. You can see Rainover making his way there along see, with Gnar. It doesn't matter that Fnatic's a little slower here because SK has no idea where the Fnatic members are. They can take their time. Yes, they might be slow on a push, but Freddy will never teleport blind into that tower. A uh, little bit more tempo advantage. Here we go. Magical journey. And this is Bard Boys. I would have liked him keeping that magical journey once he actually gets to the mid lane. Surprise, maybe somehow. But He's doing it for the observers, for everybody He's at home. He's doing it for the fans at home. Let's see if they bounce the wave correctly. Well, we're about to find out. Javelin Toss does not connect from Sven Scare, and Fnatic are going to secure the tower in a moment or two. Is Good Candy bounce Panda by Canapana. Is forced to take a couple turret shots, but successfully handles the minion wave. If you're watching and you have no idea what a bounce is, it basically means that you let the enemy creeps outnumber yours. And then because the, the location of where the waves meet, it will stack up even more. Snowball effect and the lane will push it back to you. And that's what you want. You want farm coming to you, not farm escaping from you. Safety uh, under your own turret. So, strong start then for SK. They have got the tower. Reckless is trying to do the same. He has to hurry to base. Really like he may be able to. Fnatic should get the dragon because of the numbers advantage they have on the bottom half of the map. And the long-range magical journey, saving some time there for Candy Pan and Rated. Krepa, I was talking to you about how that interaction works. Some of the different locations. You'll definitely have to keep us in tune with what sort of ganking or pathing opportunities in Rated can provide. Yeah, definitely a lot of different possibilities with that magical journey where you can go. Um, the main thing is that you can take... <laughs> no, guys, Steve is not playing this game. <laughs> That's Alan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that one. So yeah, brief pause as we do see... Uh, and Rated uh, not quite happy with the, the magicalness of his journey. Once it will have more magic. We will find out pixie dust. How, much, how much pixie dust he can pick up. I do want to ask your opinion uh, in terms of moving around the map to pick up those little chimes as far as Bard is concerned. So, In your opinion, when is the right time and why? First of all, what do the chimes do? If you do not know, 12% uh, of your um, maximum mana pool uh, gets restored when you pick up a chime. That means two chimes is roughly a quarter. Uh, yes, I did the math there. Uh, that basically means that you lane, 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 poke, spam your Qs, get your health packs out, spam them on the lane, and once your, your, your mana bar is empty, you go pick up these chimes in succession. And each chime gives you a movement speed boost out of combat that lasts up to five stacks. That means you can get one chime, second goes a little quicker, third goes a little quicker. If you then run into the mid lane, your movement speed is so high that you can close the gap on the mid laner, maybe force his flash because you auto attack now slow uh, from five chimes and onwards, or you can get back to your lane quicker. It is not worth it going for one chime and back, two chimes and back, you know? You want to do that in a very smooth motion and tie it into a roam play. And this is why I like, for example, CDR boots on Bard, but different players uh, like different things a lot. I don't think many players in competitive hack actually use the CDR boots, went for the mobility boots. But Enraided here picked up the early sidestone. I really like that. Compliments got the of the early first blood as well. Yeah, got the first blood. Translates that into vision. Vision is knowledge. Knowledge is power. Great. Great power comes great responsibility. It does indeed. So we'll Magical have to see responsibility. whether or not Enraided can make this bard work for him. I do you want to talk about some of the other picks yeah. there, of course? The uh, Cassio, the Ash. You've touched on how they are immobile when they do not have their flash available. You're a big fan of the Tempered Faith, the Bard Ultimate, sort of putting them in as onions to set up the gank from the likes of Amalkite, from, of course, getting in range for that Azir. Let's see what's happening on the map here. Towers go down, and Fnatic does a smart thing. They took the Dragon, so there are no more objectives that they have to worry about on the bottom side of the map. They don't want to lane 2v2, especially not at this level. This is where the lane Callista Bard is extremely strong, and they do the smart thing. They swap over to top lane. They will not be able to deny Freddy. Uh, they'll you know, step on his health packs, deny him some potential HP later. But they want to work on this tower. And of course, those health packs, the Caretaker Shrines, give that movement speed increase if you do want to set something up. Huni. got an early teleport from Huni here. He's actually going to complete it. And that's going to push Freddy away from the farm. And this may look really weird, but it's an incredibly smart play by Fnatic because Sven Skrin and Enraid were hiding in the jungle. If Huni went for farm, he would have gotten caught. So either he zones himself and does nothing, 
or he uses his TP to keep up the tempo. He goes top and they force that tower down. Freddy can definitely farm 1v2 under that tower, soak up a lot of XP, and that would mean that the experience gap between Freddy and Huni would become very big. However, using this teleport, when Dragon is still five minutes away from spawning, when nothing else is really gonna happen, is incredibly smart by Fnatic. Aggro here on Forbidden has the defensive flash, but tower trade for Fnatic in a position where other teams may have lost their tower on bottom and not gained one on top. Really, really good teleport by Huni, I have to stress that. Let's see if Reckless can bounce this wave yet again and get Huni back in the game. Now that they can swap back to bot lane. Well, tower's about to go down. It'll bounce regardless. At this amount of minions, it's gonna bounce. Reckless gets the local goal. Goes to base, 43 CS. Might upgrade his boots at this position. So a very tactical game thus far from both Fnatic and SK. Mm -hmm. Trading objectives, making the best of what they can. He's staying top, actually. Small goal difference, thanks, of course, to the first blood on the hands of SK. But as you pointed out, Fnatic got the early dragon as they had the bottom half of the map under control. Yeah, and Reckless rightfully scared from the Kalista bar lane, stays on the top lane. Can't deny Maokai 1v1, though. We're in a bit of an awkward position, so Fnatic will have to react to this. Definitely a lot better early game from SK Gaming than we've seen uh, yesterday. When going back to the pick and ban phase, we said last pick support. Was it worth it? Now we know why. Now we know why, indeed. Is it that risky to pick Bard earlier nope. in the draft? Or? Played into anything and with anything. <laughs> Or at least I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. A little, a, a nice uh, bout of confidence there from Krebo. One trick pony, man. That's all I have left, my bard. Well, I'm, glad, over. I'm glad you have all the info because it makes my job so much easier. You just see Rainover in his own jungle, slightly ahead, Sven Skarin, but with all the shenanigans back and forth moving across the map, keep an eye on the vision as well. SK with some deep wards to spot out uh, Rainover. A couple of wards up in the north top half of the jungle in favor of Fnatic. making the, the best of a worse situation, but Alistar Nar is not something you want on the bot lane. Rainover may have overextended here a bit. Well, Javelin toss is connected. The Shurima shuffle back. comes in and he gets Rainover. So well played. Assist in there for Fox, and it's Candy Panda that gets the kill secure. SK responding to Rainover's position instantly. Yeah, so we went on Twitter and got some of those names, and we're going to see what works, what doesn't, for that Azir Insect move. I know you've got a few more, Will. Yeah, got Leave them to be discovered as and when Fox can activate the Crepo puns. No, not mine. I just borrowed them from the, Twitter. The okay, Crepo delivered puns. You prefer that? Exactly. There we go. Trademarked Twitter. But Thank you yeah. for that. I think SK is doing really well here with their composition. Uh, definitely caught Fnatic off guard. They're in a position where Whatever they do is the wrong thing almost. Sending Ash alone in this lane is not ideal, but it's the, the least out of bad solutions. And that's always an awkward position to be in. And SK definitely in the driver's seat here. Let's see if they can snowball big of a lead to overcome the ticking time bomb that is Cassiopeia scaling and the new Ash scaling, but by no means does SK have to worry about the late game either. Yeah, com considering the performances of day one, Vast it, you, you can't compare it. It's like two different teams, but one game sample sizes. They are Not enough. simply too limited to make any sort of conclusions. Bevervin's been in this middle lane. He gave up first blood, was forced to flash off Four -man group. presence from Sven Skeren, and SK have thrown everybody into this middle lane. Right, I'm expecting an arrow if the observers are highlighting this. What else can it produce? It catches on to Fox. Rainover is trying to flash forward, but he gets knocked backwards by the Emperor's Devital, blocked out by it. Smart play Spotted. by Fox. He took that on purpose, I think, because he has cleanse, and he immediately cleansed out, and then he has the, the Shurima shuffle, we call it earlier, or just the normal uh, zero ulti to disengage here. And uh, SK keeps the pace up, 700 gold in the lead. Uh, importantly, Fight on Butler, maybe? Tower is defended. It did cost Rain over his flash. Reckless, obviously, no access to that crystal arrow. And Rated and Sven Skeren, Cosmic Binding is available. A Javelin Toss doesn't connect, nor does the Binding need to connect with those skill shots. And SK, do not Fnatic get away unscathed. Right, skill shots at the wrong time. Nice dodges by Fnatic. Just to get out of the way. So, SK back away, hold on to a small lead as we've just crossed over the 10 minute mark. The big thing here, look at the top lane, is still heavily, heavily hurting as far as CS is concerned. And we'll need to track who can have a bigger impact as this game plays out. But because SK is playing with so much pressure, for SK, making a mistake right now means that they don't get a kill. For Fnatic, making a mistake means that they get killed. And that's the difference right here. SK has a lot of liberty with their plays. Well, Fnatic is 
under pressure, and if they make one mistake, they lose control of the game completely. So, yeah. Burden of the outplay is on Fnatic again. Another great line to describe how the teams have to continue playing the game out. We did see Fnatic taking out that pink ward. Well, only VSK secured it green of their own. Dragon is alive. TP is up on Freddy and on Huni. We saw we said earlier, he TP'd within range of uh, Dragon spawn, so he definitely has it up. And I think this is where Fnatic wants to excel, that five-man team fight initiated with Arrow. Cassiopeia has flash, so she can channel her ulti and then flash for the immediate Petrify. Well, we do see Fnatic. They've started the Dragon off. It looks like SK is starting to group. Teleport Yellow Star is peeling. Has just started to be channeled here from Freddy. What sort of impact can he have? Rainova has decided to back away. The Cosmic Binding does not slow or root or anybody anything. together. But look at Febivin, level 9. He's zoned out. From the side. He's not with his team. Crystal Arrow is still available, and I think Dragon has fully reset. There was a magical journey going on just over through there. Febivin does not get caught up, doesn't get rooted. Petrify only stuns and rated, but Candy Pan is going to rend. He does get caught up, and Huni is looking. Stuns him against the wall. This is a battle on two fronts. And rated slow. Candy Panda and Sven get knocked up in the air, while Rainover is pulling all of the attention. Candy Panda is still alive. Yellow Star's looking for him, but he's not able to find him. They've been able to cut down the tree of Freddy, but Candy Panda gets another kill on the board. And we see the Tempest. Fate holding Reckless and Rainover in place. Fox throws down the Conquering Sands just a tiny bit early, but he manages to get the kill nonetheless. And SK come out with a four for one trade. Fnatic were the, the dragon. kings of the spring split, and in, in return, and Raided offers them a golden crown, but that's not what they wanted. They lose this fight and the dragon, and they go behind 2,000 gold here. What a fantastic team fight! Let's look at that again. SK. What Versus to watch in this fight is Freddy and Candy Panda here. He throws in a raid. No respect flash from Fevin. He gets slowed, hit. He should have flashed immediately. He knows he's cut out. Nice follow up flash from Candy Panda. Gets hit. Booney says, guys, I got two targets here. Yellow Star recognizes that, but watch Freddy. He's soaking up so much damage. And we saw it with Steve earlier. Maokai behind, so much utility. Yuhuni behind, not enough damage. Beautifully executed fight by SK Gaming. To the surprise of many. Fantastic. And even the prediction from Enrated on Rain over Reckless. And this is why I like it so much against carries with no flash. Either they juke backwards into your team, or they keep walking and they get the, the Zonias by surprise, and they're dead anyways. It's a 100% kill rate in either way. And love it. Absolutely loving it, Trev. The golden crown for the kings of the spring split. Somebody needs to put that in a graphic because that was fantastic, Trev. So, battle over the Scuttle Crabs. has got He's got again. Here's Half the journey. Point. Here comes the magical journey. Yellow Star's following through. Ash Arrow's on to spend. Rainover's joined the party. Everybody's knocked up. We do see Fate's Call pulling out in Rainover, but he flings himself right back in. Nobody's gone down just yet, but here comes Fox. Febivin's caught out. He's Falcon managed to kick. petrify and rated in Candy Panda, and Fox is being poisoned alive. Rainover plus Febivin sink their fangs in, but Candy bites back. When he comes in with the teleport, he's going 50% of that Mega Knob bar is on the way. Do you see a very short range magical journey as Huni follows through? I love Bard's journeys. Rainover is going to get rooted with Huni and the Korean duo are unable to chase further. If, I love these team fights. If you chase a Bard, do it one by one or the Q will screw over the enemy like your ally behind you. Do it one by one by one. Otherwise, it's going to get tricky. And Raided missed time to teleport on Huni there, but he's still got a second chance to do it. Yellow starts going down. While Sven Skerrin, he gets knocked over the wall, but the volley doesn't connect. Huni and Reckless try to get past. Nice the Tempered Fate doesn't connect, and somehow Rainover was able to solo in Raided just on the back line. Fnatic get themselves their third kill of the game, and they've closed that gold gap to a thousand between the two. The reason these fights are so interesting is because both liners are incredibly potent at kiting and not so great at chasing. If you kite with Bard and you walk into that stun, you immediately get turned on. If you ki get kited by Cassiopeia, you get hit, 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 get knocked up. Both these teams like want to fan out, but they're afraid of going at each other because Azir is so good at kiting and poking. Candy Panda is on, on. Kalista is so good at kiting and poking. So you have, to, you have to be willing to drop the fight because if you overchase, you will get turned on and it's not going to be pretty. So 15 minutes, as we said, about 1,000 gold, two towers each, one dragon each. CS is all but even, with the exception of those junglers. Big, big changes. Crystal Enchanted Arrow is going to be absolutely vital. Reckless is hiding in the dark. Who's he going to hit? He's thinking about getting Candy Panda, but... Can't hit. Hold Fox, the trigger Fox, Fox, for now. Fox, really important. 50% of that cooldown slowly ticking away, as far as Fox is concerned. Morella Nomicon picked up. 
So does that Ether Wisp. Abyssal Scepter was the completion for Febivin and SK. They want their last outer turret, Crepo. Teleport's not available for Huni. Meganar's popped They'll and he's to drop ages this. away. Really, really good siege composition by SK Gaming. While they lack one tank, they gain extra siege power. Azir, incredibly potent at sieging. Nidalee's spear is really hard to dodge while you're trying to clear waves. Reminiscent of when uh, Forgiven and Ghost of Pepper were pushing in, if you have to go for those minions, you're gonna eat skill shots. You don't wanna eat those skill shots from uh, Svenskern right now. Those spears, they hurt. That's definitely the case. If also, the, um, the just very quickly, the gold difference between AD carries, 1,500 gold between Candy Pen and Reckless. Candy's sitting on the advantage he has, so yep. that's going to translate to more power very shortly. You invest in a Bloodthirst to stay tanky and have a lot of lifesteal in these long, kite-heavy fights. One thing about Bard 2, um, when your diving towers become optional, you can choose uh, to let a tower use his Zonias. No more targets, no more shots for 2.5 seconds. You can really turn fights. If you dive somebody and you get two people plus a tower, and the ultimate, that dive suddenly becomes a 5v3 in the open. A uh, very, very potent ability. Very high risk, high reward. It's interesting to see SK can not only spawn their own towers, they can disable opponents' towers. We'll be, see how they play it out. Also, Candy Panda, gone for the Zeal as well as Brawler's Club. So he's not going for the Hurricane build that we've seen out of most uh, Killisters this weekend. Yeah, I want to see an old breaker, Trevor. Why? You've got Bard. He's got a built-in one. Yeah, more, more. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, the, the Callista build, BT first into Zeal. Uh, just wants to stay alive and not get bursted. I, I can respect it. The only problem is, is he going to stack enough of that, you know, uh, Bloodthirst or passive up before a fight? Because there's a lot of pacing for this fight. Is he going to find minions and monsters to stack that up? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we will see because Dragon's coming up at 50 seconds. It's going to be a big fight again. The previous Dragon was very influential. One apiece, so we're not racing to Khaleesi or number five anytime soon. No, they can uh, they can definitely take it on the back foot here. Wouldn't be surprised if, uh, given the way this game has been evolving, given the state of the side lanes, the Fnatic will just straight up drop this, uh, this Dragon. They can, they're sending... See, this is what I like. They're sending Rain over, deal with that Dragon. Yes, they have Teleport. Uh, or almost up on Huni, but they opted to just send their jungler there uh, because he has a built-in teleport uh, on his ultimate, on 12, ultimate. 12 seconds until we can see the Void Rush coming out of Rainover's Rex site. Dragon is up in about 10, so it will be available. There's a few tunnels nearby, and it will take a little while longer. SK on a heavy invade, and then just got clearing out these tunnels, so that option of pulling Rex site in is going to become more limited. And Freddy's already walked down. This buys more time, so that doesn't mean... If there's a lot of pacing going back and forth, he doesn't have to TP in at any time. He can just wait here and TP out. Uh, Rainover used his ulti. Mega Nar is getting very, very I think close. They are it's too late, just gonna have to drop this. Fnatic unable to respond to Dragon number two, so a relatively safe attempt. He's popped to Mega Nar. The Raider takes a nice long journey to get to safety. Fnatic grouping up now in this middle lane. Good wave clear from Fox, and Javelins from the side, Sven Skeren, spreading Fnatic apart and dissuading any sort of further pressure on that middle lane. Uh, I think we'll see a complete reset here. They're getting the Dragon Icon, just getting that pink ward moving down the bottom. And again, both these teams like controlling their side lanes. I think that's what's going to happen right now. Uh, no real reason to fight. And however, European LCS, none of us needed a reason to fight. <laughs> Which is why we love watching it, Pepe. Sometimes we do. Uh, yeah, they're moving in for Deep Vision. SK always has the opportunity to get the Deep Vision first uh, because they have the pressure and a lot of these poke and CG sustain. And Ash is still scaling. Well, just so there's a brief update. 36 chimes collected for N-rated thus far. That's all. I do want to quickly highlight, as we hit 20 minutes, again, that's only 1,000 gold, but look at the big items. Righteous Glory picked up for Freddy. Luden's Echo picked up for Fox. Archangels was completed for Febivin as well as the Shiv for Candy Panda. So a few sort of breakpoints have started to get put into place. This is the yeah, reason that I... Survive ability. It's going to be more interesting as the fights break out. Didn't really like this Ash pick too much. It has some damage, but it's so immobile. In addition to an immobile mage, control mage in the mid lane, having a double threat composition, where like, Huni's a bit of a hybrid, uh, but you have the lane swap, so he's not really a threat. Without any escapes, uh, it's tricky. Really, really tricky. 
Tricky means interesting, and I'm okay with that. Yellow Star is going to fire. Oh, so Here's the arrow. Sven's caught out. Tempered Fate comes up. That's going to keep Sven alive for a few seconds longer. Emperor's Divide knocks them back. Now, Reynov is looking for the next target. It's Reckless that got the kill. The house lands onto Fox. Flash Nod does time. not connect as Fox responds in kind. Now, Freddy has got knocked up in the air. He's not going to try back away. He flashes over the minions. The, min the tower might be the next focus as the Sand Soldiers come up. Look at that damage from Fox. They finally get uh, 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 Freddy knocked out as Beautiful Katia Pia jumps in. Petrifying Gaze freezes up SK Gaming. They do get the mid tower and Fnatic end up trading one for three the tower. And let's see if they can take more. It looks like I was wrong about this. Ash, really nice opening created by Reckless. Nice follow up. Yes, this only has worked, but everybody just stood still watching. So time basically froze, and then that ultimate has no use if it's only one target. Everyone's just watching Svensko die. He uses Flash till that. SK had to disengage and not lose any more members because they started this fight basically 4.2 against 5, and Svensko had to jump out and really, really not ideal. Nice snowball from Fnatic. Other teams could have maybe backed off, but they were confident in their diving ability. Close out some more kills and got a tower. Really, really crucial point in the game. All right, we'll see whether or not they can keep that one up. So many people jumping on top of one another. Yes, we got some exciting team fights. The vision is something that we haven't touched on all too much for the time being, but we do need to highlight the Mikhail's Crucible just picked up four N rated against Petrifying Gaze, against Enchanted Crystal Arrow, that long range CC. It's going to give N rated even more tools with the ultimate from Bard as well as the active. So the you, a Bard can spec into many roles. He can be a combat fighter or he can be the medic. <laughs> ah, the illustrious troll portal. <laughs> Throw off your enemies, off your scent. Nice, <laughs> nice seed. And Raider has really mastered the bar. No, that, that happens, especially if you're smart casting. Happened to me many, many times. Um, wasn't really that uh, impactful. But I like to, I actually like to pick up. Usually I'm not a big fan of uh, Mikael's first, but against such a, I wouldn't say one dimensional, but a, a composition relying on a Enchanted Quisted Arrow or Petrifying Gaze. Definitely a nice pick up. And he has to sit in the back and basically be a medic right now. That's what he has to do. Keep people alive, cleanse stuns, speed them up, give them a journey to escape, and kite with his Q. Well, let's see. The Azir turret has been spawned behind SK Gaming, giving them some vision and some control. Reckless has got the Crystal Arrow available, but it is easily countered by the Crucible. Let's see what sort of zone control and how long SK opt to stay here. Minion Waves pushing against them. Bottom Crepo. Minion Waves, I believe, pushing towards Fnatic Top. We'll see how that plays out in a moment or two. SK decide to cancel that siege. Yeah, both teams don't really want to engage there because SK has the, the safety of their um, pop-up tower from Azir and then Fnatic has their safety from their actual tower uh, in the mid lane. Really hard to get that fight going because both of them, as we said before, they like walking backwards. They don't necessarily want walking forwards unless some of the members on the other team are dead already. And something that you had highlighted yesterday. Yellow Star and his Baron calls in the early to mid, well, early mid game. That Triple is a massive, ultimate. the Tempered Fate catches everyone. SK have grouped up. We see Enrated knocking them up with the Fate's call, but Reckless is in a fairly safe position. What can he do? He's firing volley after volley. The tree is down. Look at Candy Panda on the left. Both top laners have been removed from the fight, but Fnatic are in retreat. Febivin may be cut off from the rest of the team. He does seem to have the positioning, and Febivin was not in that team fight. I think Fnatic, Relatively well played to come out in that one for one, but what a great initiation from Enrated. This was a really solid opening by Enrated, but if we get the replay later, I think we can highlight something that uh, shows SK isn't super experienced with this play, but we can get back to that later. Fnatic comes out 1v1, loses a tower, that's enough. Are they going to translate this? Now, I want, I want you to watch Enrated, and I want to see if he actually gets his Q off, because he gets a beautiful opening. Again, either they juke forward and they die, or they get hit. Enrated is setting up for a beautiful double stun, but nope, because Candy Panda pulls him back in, and this really throws him off guard, and they don't get the fight they want, because now Huni comes in and starts peeling, and he does what Freddy is doing at the other side, and Reckles, he managed to escape there, and I think that's a little bit of miscommunication by SK, and they should definitely hold on to let Bard launch his Q. Well, for everybody at home, that was an LCS Bard play if ever I've seen yep. one. Fnatic now unable to stop the following dragon, and SK secured that one rapidly. Third dragon of the game, gold, as close as it is to even. One tower and two dragons. SK have got the objective advantage. Yeah, what a fantastic game so far. Definitely better than, than I could have imagined, honestly. And props to Enraded. Often gets a lot of, uh, you know, 
complaints or maybe critique that he's not the best laner, not the best mechanics. Sh shallow champion pool, but he picks up arguably the best support in the league right now with Barden. He's doing phenomenal. I was one of his biggest critics towards the end of the spring split, and I just, I didn't, I didn't see this level of performance from Enrated for a number of games. And again, just showing up, first time Bard in the summer split, despite a few cosmic findings, those Qs not connecting. The, the ultimate, the Tempered Fate, which is arguably more difficult to land, he's connecting multiple. Yeah, I like to hope it's difficult to land, else I was playing an easy champion after that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's playing phenomenal, and he's not afraid to make the engage, and that's what I really like. Playing on the, on the stage without fear of failure is something you really have to do if you want to become a top team, and definitely showing it here. And the added pressure of bouncing back from the defeat yesterday on SK shoulders, on Candy Panda, who, again, is going to be measured against Forgiven because he's replaced him. Here we go again. 7 0 2. Tempered Fate this time does not connect. Definition of cast a curse. But Fnatic is, were able to kite away from it. There's a certain distance you have to cast the ability, and under that, later in the game, with so much move speed, especially on a, on a champion like Ash with the Zeal and the Tier 2 boots, it becomes very dodgeable. And it's really hard to find that uh, ideal sweet spot. So definitely nice that the SK keeps trying because there's very little opportunity cost. They don't lose too much. They just lose the Bardo. Yes, they could lose it for a fight. And if Fnatic can capitalize on that by a Baron here. But I like that SK is trying. I really like it. Don't sit back farming because Fnatic eventually, they will outmacker you. Wow. And rated not yet level 11. 110 second cooldown on that Tempered Fate. Decent length of time that Fnatic have to play with that window of opportunity where they're not afraid. We do see a teleport coming into the middle lane, but they've already killed Svenskeren in the blink of an eye. And there's no teleport on Freddy because Huni doesn't have his teleport either. And this is going to get really ugly. Going to get ugly indeed. You can see on the picture in picture, holo holo, in rated, no tempered fate. It's on cooldown. Rest of SK doing Never what they can. The Baron's been picked up. Fox has gone all the way in. This time the Shurima shuffle sends him back to the pit. And we do see in rated as well as Freddy on a magical journey. Hooney, Fox, they want to go for it. We do see in rated getting pulled back by the fate's call. And all of a sudden, Fnatic have got two kills and the Baron buff after catching Sven in his own jungle. And just as I say that there's no opportunity cost for using that Tempered Fate, Fnatic goes for the Baron because they see Freddy on the bot lane, and because they're so good at tracking cooldowns, they know Freddy did not have Teleport. They started that Baron, they forced Sven's going to face check, caught him out. Definitely snowballing the pressure here. Fnatic bouncing back from an extremely left early game, but somehow they do it again. Yeah, they definitely do. They've got the top inner turret. They're setting their sights on the middle inner turret. Meganar's gonna time out for Huni, but I don't think SK can put up enough of a defense to stop this one from going down. And Fnatic, once again, arrest control of the game. It was SK's for a while, it was Fnatic's for a while. It's trading back and forth. We'll see who's going to get control of this next Dragon, which will be coming up in a few minutes' time. Both teams can be proud of their early game performance, in my opinion. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> That, right, that messed with the flow a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, who cares? Let's, let's touch on the QSS. Not only does Enrated have that Crucible, but now Candy Pen has got his own defense. Got that Quicksilver Sash picked up. I think uh, Reckless is sitting on 3,000 gold. There or thereabouts, he's going to pick himself up. A lot of juicy items, as you can see it being spent. Rainover, got a ton of gold to spend as well. Fnatic are going to set their sights probably on that bottom inner turret. A lot of respect from Fnatic as well. Usually when you see Baron picked up, Things go quick. Tier 2 towers start falling left and right. Inhibitors get exposed. Take one tower, rotate, set up some vision. Very, very slow Baron. Uh, one, one could argue inefficient, but uh, I'd just say respect for SK's lineup here. And Fnatic feels like time speaks into their favor, and they want to get into positions where they have high expected value. And it's also, it. it's also, this is a, a, a slightly different style for Fnatic in summer, because in spring, I agree with you, they would have just been all in. They would have been using it, would have been rushing down. But now that, you know, I think they're coming to grips with their aggressive style, it's just reeling it back. Make sure they've got control of the, the bucking Bronco that is SK. Keep it under control, keep the reins in their hand, and then take the objectives. QSS again. On Candy Panda. He can dodge the arrow. Uh, rendering the Mikhail is quasi useless, I guess, but can be used on other targets. Well, let's see how this next engage plays out. We've just ticked over 30 minutes, guys. 
five and a half thousand gold ahead of Fnatic after being even for so, so long. So I don't, I don't think Fnatic is actually going to go for the tower. They just want to keep pushing in SK, making them believe, and then back off. And this point right here where Febben is walking right here, that's the choke point where you want to punish SK. You can't let them get through that. If you can hold them there, force them to move around, or on the choke point where Fox is right now, that's those two points where Fnatic wants to hold the enemy down if they can. And something else that we've you know, not touched on really at all is Svenskeren's item build. Luden's Echo, Magus and Sean. He's gone full Pop -pop. AP Nidalee for all of that poke, juicy poke, siege control damage. And we'll see whether or not he can connect onto Fnatic's champions. Nice rotational play. They recognize the choke points on SK side, so they push in mid-force Fnatic to react to the mid lane. Then Fnatic, uh, SK moves in first to the dragon. And Chandler goes to our. Wow, there we go. Candy Panda instantly QSSs that one away. I think he got caught by the Crucible as well. Hootie, it's going to go Mega Nar, but he's dropped already. Unable to channel his ultimate. That's a four man knocker from Yellow Star. And the petrifying gaze catches onto Freddy. Candy Panda forced to flash defensively. Now we see the journey. Everybody's going through it. Two kills for Febivan as they're trying to chase down the retreating SK. One for three. Reckless. Can he find the volley? It's going to slow in Rater, but nobody else will continue the chase. I totally lied to you. There comes Yellow Star. Off on the side, and Rach is in trouble. That's a headbutt pulverize onto Candy Panda. But he never decides to peel away. And Candy Panda and Rach get away with their lives. Fnatic get three kills, and they're going to convert the turret after the chase. Absolutely massive AoE on Fnatic's side there. Let's see that again. Let's see what happens. The arrow comes out, immediate QSS. Let's see if QSS of Mikhail's is used as well. Yep, double, double Mikhail's and QSS. Nicely spot by you, Trevor, there. Huni goes in, barely dies. So you think this goes bad for Fnatic? Look at that, the bar ulti also takes out Ash and Cassiopeia, but there's so much damage, so much AoE. Quadra combo, knock up from Rainover, AoE from Feminine, and Reckless to finish it all off. Beautifully executed fight, and just makes you wonder what would happen when Huni actually transformed and got Gnar ulti off too. I think props to Enraided for landing that Tempered Fate, kept two carries out of the fight, but they just, they should have disengaged. Once Once the, the uh, zero T is down, you have to get out of there if you don't have any kills on, on the back of that one. And Rated had a great ultimate. Yellow Star had an even better headbutt. Four members of SK knocked into the air. And then I think Febivin, the fact that he petrified Candy, so, so integral. This is why Yellow Star is lauded as one of the best supports in Europe because that's a game winning play right there. Well, Rated still have to get over final hurdle. Well, final few hurdles, in fact, to get to the Nexus, but they've got a strong enough lead. They've got the tools available to them, especially if, if you're going to QSS and Mikhail's the single spell, even more so. If the Crucible had been saved for Candy Panda's petrifying gaze, what woulda, coulda, shoulda been? Yeah, and with a 9,000 gold lead, you can afford some fancy shoes to get over those hurdles, though. So it's going to be a lot easier for Fnatic right now. Gonna keep an eye on Teleport coming in. Well, let's see what Huni can do. The Crystal Arrow is saved by the Fates Core, but Sven is a little caught out. Huni zoning, Yellow Star zoning, but Febivin's the one in trouble. He's gonna throw down that Archangel's and he's going to survive. Oh, Candy Panda's the next target. Febivin with a double kill. The chimney lands on Sven Skeren as he transforms back to human to try to chase. Huni now looking for more. Nah is available. He misses once more. This is not Huni from day one, but he lands the house again. We do see Fox channeling up another tower, but it's just gonna be a little more gone in Fnatic's coffers as we see Fnatic barreling down the middle lane with two more kills after a successful teleport play. What fantastic team by Spoonie goes down! Holo, holo, holo! Fox this says no, no, no! Sniping from afar with the Conquering Sands. There are some in the Oceanic region that would say that damage was disgusting. It was indeed. Let's see. Reckless maybe caught here. Has to flash. Well, Yellow Star is now the man that's in trouble, taking a ton of soldier attacks. We do see the Luden's Echo Prox. And Fox says, you shall not pass go. You shall not spend your gold without punishment. And Baron has just spawned two see? members of Fnatic down. Not even sure if that's worth the flash. You kill the support that all you had to base while you're about to attend the Baron. Yes, it looks fancy, but you need that flash in the fight. 
Well, we'll find out if they do need it. We do see Rek'Sai being played by Rainover. He's moved his way in. Baron is down. Look at the HP on the bottom left of your screen, guys. Reckless, Enchanted Crystal Arrow, but it hits the tree. He's been yes. crucible. Baron down to 3,000. It's going lower. Rainover's gone in, but he doesn't get it. It's actually secured by Fox. But what about the fight? Emperor's Divide is going to lock people out, but Rainover, he's soloed the mid lane. He's picked up a double. Reckless has got one more of his own as Candy Pan is trying to reply. The Magical Journey will not get anyone a magical life. And Fnatic Ace SK Gaming. How does Fnatic keep doing this every time again? But I, one thing I want to highlight is miscommunication on Candy Panda and Enraided side. You see Enraided posturing. Maybe you don't play the champion enough, but you saw him looking for a Q, and Candy Panda just pulls him back again, back into his Pokeball, and he just really didn't want to go there. He was Pikachu season one right there. and. Ah, they need to work more together. Yeah, the problem is they were thrown right into Ash, who was happy to catch him and kill him and take him down in the Baron Pit. Towers down in the top and middle lane. Inhibitors will follow shortly, and Fnatic are in absolute control of the first matchup against SK. Yeah, and the Mikhail's and Maokai not really needed. If your tank gets hit and stunned, you don't really care. You don't need the damage on Baron. If they're going to hit him, so be it. It's a Maokai. He can survive it. But a lot of growth from SK. We're highlighting some negative points, but they're much more minute compared to how well they have been playing in this game. Starting that Baron took a lot of guts. It worked out, they got it, but they just need to learn when to go back, you know, when to disengage, when to take that magical journey into safety. Let's watch that again. Arrow to Mauka. I don't think he needs the Mikhail, so he can just stand there. They're going, they're getting low from the Baron. Uh, and Raiden was walking up to Peel, but he gets pulled out. And yeah, Rainover is just taking down Fox. Fox gets everybody out, but Rainover was burned under the wall, and Reckless basically gets more time with the Zonias. Now they're cleaning up. Fantastic fight once again. I do want to reiterate what you were saying, the Crepo. SK definitely showing some improvement and just a little bit of maybe communication difference between Candy and Rated, which is something that will improve with time. That is true. And and Bora, our uh, Yellow Star Rider, wasn't in that fight at all. So it makes you wonder, was it worth for Fox to use his Flash to kill the support? Fox died with Rain over hitting him. He could have flashed out of the Baron. He could have maybe done a fancy Shurima shuffle. Who knows? It looks nice to capitalize on a Baron, but late game you don't want to trade your flash for a support kill. Not when you're contesting an objective. But these are all very small things, easy to spot from the caster seat. I know how hard it is to make those decisions on the fly in the game. And that's why I have so much respect for Fnatic, because rough early game, rough mid game, but now suddenly we're 9,000 gold ahead. Challenge two Barons. Pushing in for the third and final inhibitor. Yeah, got super minions almost on the steps of SK's middle lane. A big wave pushing in the top lane of those supers. Gonna be buffing one another up. And we'll find out if that no flash fox. What will the fox do under the tower? The last remaining inhibitor. Enchanted Crystal Arrow is up. QSS is up. Mikhail's is up. And we need to see those used slightly more effectively, slightly more in tune if SK want to. What? Hold on long enough. What will the fox say? Fnatic goes for that third and final in him. Oh, Fnatic are trying to ring ding ding on the door and make their way in. <laughs> okay, we're done with these references. Yellow Star's thanking the tower. <laughs> right, Tempered we fate? do see Tempered Fate. It only catches Reckless and nobody from SK is willing to commit. Yellow Star interrupts arrow and the arrow does go wide. That's not going to go through the goalposts. A Fnatic we're looking for, but look, Super Minions are inside the base. As soon as someone goes to deal with them, Fnatic will have the advantage. That's the problem. Yes, you land an, an engage on Reckless, but do you really want to walk into Meganar and a Cassiopeia with Petrifying Gaze? I don't think so. So, nice ID by SK, but the wrong timing. You don't want to fight Huni, Huni and Meganar because counter engage potential is too damn high. Well, we did see Candy Panda trying to deal with the Super Minions on the Nexus turret. Nexus turret will, in fact, be falling. I believe it's going so, so low. Huni goes Meganar, so that's at least a cooldown that SK can be slightly less afraid of, but successful they hold siege up. for Fnatic because they get the tower. Yes, but at the same time, successful defense for uh, SK. Dropping only an Nexus Tower on, with two inhibitors exposed is uh, a sacrifice you might be willing to make at this point in the game. Well, I've got no real choice either. If you're in SK's position, there's still 9,000 gold down. We're about to hit 40 minutes. Three dragons to three, nine towers to five. But a lot more competitive this game than what we saw from day one. Both of the teams having strong points at different times. Yeah, well, a lot of people were quick to draw conclusions from day one and just show you that 
things can vary and we'll have to wait for weeks two and three to really see what teams fall into patterns and what teams may have just had an off day because SK showed up and this is definitely not the SK of yesterday. Whew. Yeah, we just flew past. Farm alarm, but there's nothing to farm. Champions. Oh, we'll Farming see. champions at this point. 3, 2 and 13 on Rainover's Rek'Sai. 16 of his team's 19 kills. I know everyone talks about Huni, everyone is excited about Reckless, but the real star is Rainover. He consistently shows up every single game. He's the glue that ties it all together, in my opinion. Especially early in the Fnatic days as well, where he spoke English a lot better than Huni, and he translated for his Korean comrade, and he, together with, with uh, Yellowstar, carried that team environment. They were the link, you know, Yellowstar to carry Rainover, the translator for Huni, and they worked together, and. Impressive what they could have done, because if you go back uh, to Worlds before Super Hot, Super Hot Royal Club, as we say, <laughs> <laughs> all the time, they were the exception to the rule of having foreign players and do well. All the other mixed nationalities didn't do well. Think of the likes of CLG with Seraph. Didn't go too well. Communication issues left and right. Fnatic, they seem to find a solution for that. Found a way to work through it. It was great hearing the story of how Yellowstar made friends with Rainover while Fnatic was in Korea for Worlds last year. And then through the discussions, agreed to bring both Huni and Rainover in. And what, what a, a great investment. I mean, yeah. you can't, you cannot replicate this, but sometimes it just works. Reckless actually said in the video, right at the beginning of the game, it's just something about his time on Elements that didn't click. You know, all the ingredients can add up to a chocolate cake, but if, if something is off, something is sour, it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly what. Your support in Elements is always eating that chocolate cake. It's quite difficult. Let's get back to the game. The Fnatic waiting for Baron to spawn 25 seconds. Again. That's what they're doing. There's Res no pressure. And respect for SK. Yep. The first Baron, which Fnatic picked up, you know, Kripa, you were saying it was a little bit of a tempered usage of it, you know, controlling their their, their pace. But look at the map now. There's they're a spreading out. of flanking. There's a teleport for Huni. Phase 6 about. Yellowstar is going to punish that. He's going to get away. Nice flanking by Fnatic. They don't want to all go at the same time. and. Yeah, they're going back, as you pointed out on the minimap. Nar on the bot lane. Huni split pushing. He's going to draw them away and tell SK, no, we're not. Fnatic's telling SK right now, we're not going to start this Baron. Please send somebody to Huni. We're definitely not going to go for it. Or if you try to contest, you're going to lose your inhibitor. And do you really want to lose another inhibitor, SK? We're about to find out. One quick thing to note is we've hit 42 minutes. Cassia P has hit 500 stacks. Here's Huni, though. Massive. The Ash Arrow catches on this fence. Gara, there's no Crucible nearby to save him. Feathervent gets another kill on the board as Huni is cosmically binded in place. Enrated trying to get away as Yellowstar's got the Righteous Glory movement speed up. He's not going to get the movement debuff onto SK, but it's not needed. Look, minions on the top lane, minions on the bottom lane, Fnatic on the Baron, and it's all on SK. What are they going to do? And they've managed to find the right pick every time time they take out the jungler oh they do manage to stop Feverbin and reckless and sk have picked this fight baron was secured by fanatic there's minions in the picture in picture everybody is dying for sk gaming freddy will be the next one to fall and fox is on the wrong side of the river he does shut down Feverbin though as his poison will tick over for the triple kill fanatic have got minions aplenty damage galore and they should be knocking on the nexus door <laughs> Just gonna let that breathe. <laughs> but Fnatic, they managed to find one pick, and it's the crucial one on the jungler. Once Smite is out of the equation, they can safely start that Baron. Ruin SK. They have to contest this. They had no choice, and now they have no Nexus, Trevor. There is no Nexus, and Fnatic go 2 0 in week one. Conceding SK two losses in week one. But we were entertained. The amount of relief on Yellow Star's face as he stood up. They had to dig deep and work hard for that victory. Everybody's heart was pumping, Bora. That was a great performance, but I think... Props to SK too. That's, I, I really feel the same. I was very, very worried for SK yesterday. I was very worried for Candy Panda, but much like Steve from Rocket, can he just bounce back, shows the caliber of his play, his abilities. A little bit of miscommunication with the Bard. It's an intricate champion to work yeah, with. Yeah, but that's very, very minor. You know, exactly. I'm only noticing that because I've played the champion so many times. But SK can leave today with their head held high. They put up a phenomenal performance.
pretty nice drafting phase. Not what you usually used to seeing in the EULCS, and a, a nice lost Bard pick. And as much as we're trolling about and you know joking, yeah. it, it did work, and they had some really nice engages. Completely agree. And Fnatic had to fight for this one, and it is not often that Fnatic has to fight for a game. Coming into this week, I had expected a little more Bard. Um, we had discussed extensively the tools of his kit, and especially when seeing Ash. I mean, Febervin, 11, 5, and 6. Maybe that's part of the reason they are where they are. Because they're not happy if with you this can look like, If you can look like that because you are 11, 5, and 6 and won the game, stay hungry, guys. That's how you win. Don't settle, don't settle for just being in the LCS. Touching back on the Bard, I, I believe by week 4, oh, and I, I, this is actually me judging the pick, that he actually be, be higher ranked and, and, and come in. Especially with Alistair rising to the top, I think we're going to see more Alistair bans and people will have to look for another solution Support. unless people start flexing Morgana a lot more. But we'll see about that in future. Definitely like, yeah, as you said, you know, the player reactions from Fnatic after yes. this game, they did not look happy and Daylor is like, hey guys, we won, you know, happy face. But it, It's something on the European LCS that I, I particularly enjoy watching is how teams celebrate in, in what ways, because a lot, of, a lot of players are very subdued, a lot of players you, you, you sort of know the result a few minutes ahead of time if you've got a strong enough lead. Mm -hmm. um, and you could see how relieved Fnatic were. I, we also caught a glimpse of Fox on Azir, who, by the way, dealt the most damage to champions in the game out of everybody. And I thought his Azir was fantastic. Yep, he did well. But there was just a lot of tools from Fnatic to get around the wall, to find the flank. It felt like Fnatic could always flank SK. It's because you're playing a one tank composition and if you look at the difference in support, yes, Bard is nice, but Alistar, he can just hover around on his own and he has no risk of getting caught because if he does, he pops the Unbreakable Will. Rainover is very mobile, you know, tunneling under all these walls and getting around the sides and then they have a lot of vision control. Not only is Fnatic really good at warding, they have the new Ash with double Hawkshot coming out, so they're always in control. Fnatic is a team that plays well with information and they have a way of getting a lot of information at the same time, so that makes them a very worthy opponent to play against, but... If you go back to the early game, SK, they did well. And that definitely surprised me. They, they forced uh, Fnatic into a position where they, they were forced to make errors, right? They had the, we had that bout where Reckless was farming in the top lane solo against the Maokai as Ash. If that's where the game is going, you don't really want that. was the best solution for uh, Fnatic, but definitely a good strategic play by uh, SK Gaming so far. Very, very interesting game. One that's going to be talked about on Reddit a lot, I am for sure. But that does mean Fnatic are 2-0 on the week. It does mean SK, they do bounce back. We'll need to see how both of the respective teams adapt in the following week. For now, though, we're going to throw it over to the analyst desk to take a look at how Fnatic went 2-0 to start.